Hello, and welcome to the Be Purely Balanced podcast. I'm Dr. Crystal Couture, and today I'm here with Ashley Matthews. Ashley is inspired by the Buddhist idea that our suffering stems from attaching to things that change. Ashley became a certified yoga teacher while pursuing her undergraduate degree. She is grateful for learning early on that yoga is a state of being rather than something to be obtained. Ashley's purpose or dharma as yoga teachers crystallized when one of her regular students confided that attending her classes helped her in her battle with depression. Comforted, comforted by the moon's unchanging presence in the sky, no matter where her journeys took her, she became a certified alchemical astrologer in 2017 as a way to learn more deeply about herself and her soul's path. Ashley weaves the wisdom of yoga with the knowledge of the stars into her yoga classes, retreats, and one-on-one -on -one natal and predictive chart readings in the Newburyport, Massachusetts area. Growing up on Plum Island gave Ashley a lifelong connection to the ocean and its teaching that like the waves, life is impermanent, which ultimately became the motivation behind naming her practice Ride the Wave Yoga, Meditation, and Astrology. Riding the wave is the practice of allowing things to just be as they are without resisting or grasping. The key to experiencing radical joy in this moment. Welcome, Ashley. Hi, Crystal. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's an honor to have you. And I'm so excited. Today, our topic is alchemical astrology, and I can't wait for us to dive in together. Yay. Thank you. I'm so excited too. <laughs> so Ashley, I would love for you to share with our listeners your story of transformation from working in marketing to becoming a yoga teacher and an alchemical astrologer. Absolutely. Um, I'd love to share that. So I went to school. Um, I went to university in Tampa, Florida, and I'm originally from Plum Island, Massachusetts, as you stated. Um, I went to school in 2010, not really knowing exactly where my path was going to lead me. Um, and for that reason, I chose a major in communication because I knew that um, I loved being around people and, and talking and, um, and really just learning learning. Um, I'm very open to learning about different things. So um, I, of course, majored in communication. I um, took a philosophy course my sophomore year in college, and um, that introduced me to principles behind Buddhism and Hinduism, um, introduced me really to the um, philosophy behind yoga. <clears throat> and so I was really inspired by that class. Dr. Steve Geis at UT uh, taught that course. Um, and so I started teaching yoga in college. Um, when I was there, uh, I picked up a double minor in philosophy and international studies. And um, I'm a Sagittarius, and Sagittarians often are sort of the philosophers. Um, they're interested in higher knowledge and foreign culture. So that was really fitting to me. And I had not known about astrology until after I graduated college. So looking back on my life, it's amazing to, you know, to have the knowledge I have now and, and see how things have lined up um, according to the stars. It's fascinating. So um, I took a course, a uh, few courses in digital marketing and um, eventually ended up with an internship that fo was focused in marketing. Um, long story short, kind of long journey short, um, <laughs> took a couple positions within sales and um, I helped small businesses connect with other companies in the area, relocated companies in Tampa um, to grow their bottom line. And it's always just been a passion of mine uh, to talk to new people, meet new people. Um, I'm inspired by different people. Um, and so, yeah, basically I graduated and worked in corporate for about, um, two years off and on um, before I realized I'm really destined to sort of be my own boss. And so I quit um, my job and, and took a couple gigs tending bar, uh, bartending, um, 
and eventually started teaching yoga full time now about a year and a half. So um, it was risky and scary, but ultimately I wouldn't have it any other way. Being my own uh, sort of boss is the greatest. It's awesome. <laughs> So at what age did you become attracted to the stars, the planets, and the sky? Because it sounds like you weave them into every conversation that, that you and I have. There's <laughs> like these little facets, you know, of it. So I'm just curious, when did you know? Mm, it's a great question. Actually, um, I can sort of pinpoint the, the month um, uh, and year. It was about like November of 20, um, would have been, yeah, it would have been 2010. I was a freshman in college and first time really being far away from my home. Um, I was surrounded by new people. Um, U Tampa is a very international um, school uh, in that it, it accepts students from all over the world. So um, being introduced to, to this, new, this new environment um, really kind of made me homesick. I was pretty homesick for the for my freshman year. And um, in November of 2010, I remember being at somebody's house uh, outside at a, um, a, like, a little gathering in South Florida and looking up at the stars and just seeing the moon and the stars um, and remembering a time when I was on the beach at home and on Plum Island looking up and just marveling at that sky. Um, it immediately drew me um, to a sense of home uh, and place and belonging. Um, so that was really the, the peak of becoming interested in, in the stars and, and looking up. Um, I really found a lot of solace there. And uh, my, let's see, maybe a year and a half later, I came home from uh, school for Christmas break and I picked up a book. Um, and I'll share with you that the name, The Secret Language of Relationships by Gary Goldschneider and Juiced Elfers. And it's about an 800 page book and it talks about um, how we relate to individuals based on the week in which we were born. And I just stuck my nose in that book the whole Christmas break. I couldn't stop reading about friends and ex-boyfriends and family members and, and it was all just so accurate. And I was amazed at how accurate this book was in sort of outlining our general tendencies and, and how we can um, you know, relate to others based on our astrological makeup. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I recommend that book if you're new to, to astrology. For sure. I think every one of us could be super interested in a book like this because it sounds like it gave you great insight into it, the way that different relationships aligned and mm -hmm. of course how they resolved. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Definitely a lot of um, just affirmation that was there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, as I, as I think to myself about looking out to our sky, right, I instantly feel this shift in perspective. And I always feel the sense of being closer to spirit, awareness, and expansion. It, it like instantly kind of drops in for me. So what do you believe to be the connection between humans and the sky? It's a great question, um, Crystal. And it's really, it comes back to this um, fact that humans have always had a connection to the sky. Um, you know, they always knew to look up when they had a major question about the larger meaning of things. Um, it's astrology. Historically, it's a method of tracking patterns and explaining phenomena, both, um, you know, celestial and terrestrial. Um, because the sky is larger than us, it, it, can prov it may be able to provide answers. At least that's what we've thought as um, humans for thousands of years. Um, if you look back, every culture has had their own form of astrology. Um, and the first real sighting of um, humans connecting terrestrial events to, the, to lunar activity and, and um, celestial activity happened, it dates back to the Homo sapien era. Um, and Homo sapiens were found, in fact, buried with animal bones that had 28 notches carved into them, marking off the 28 days of the lunar month. Wow. So it, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's ingrained in us, um, as above, so below, uh, it goes the saying, um, and so yeah, ancient cultures, they, they track the movement of 
these planets in the sky. Um, planet is Greek for wanderer and people would notice, you know, there's certain fixed stars in the sky, but then there's also these moving stars and they'd correlate that movement to the movement or events that were happening on the earth. Um, so this is this is called mundane astrology. Mundus is Roman for world. So world astrology, seeing how the planets affect us um, on the Earth. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Mind blown. <laughs> it is. It's crazy. <laughs> so why don't we why don't we get into the definition of what is alchemical astrology? Let's start there to sort of clean things up so that people have an idea of what we're talking about from, you know, the simplest sense. And then we can dive into the more woo-woo aspects of energies and connections and whatnot. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so alchemical astrology, uh, I'm a certified astrologer under um, Alana Kaivalya, who's named the, her program Alchemical Astrology. Um, uh, Alchemy really is the ancient and scientific practice of changing base metals into other substances such as gold. Um, once seen as an occult practice, um, it revealed secrets that could literally change or transform um, or alchemize people's lives. Um, it, and it used to be reserved for just royalty um, for that reason. Now has been through astrology and through programs like Alana's, um, this, this power, this transformation available to us has been placed back into our own hands. Um, mm -hmm. So while chemical astrology really is, this, is looking at our birth chart, um, a picture of where the planets were in the sky at the time of our birth and observing how we are exhibiting um, or living out the energies of the planets themselves. Um, astrology, alchemical astrology, really I see it as an awareness tool that we have um, and we need to be aware first before we can make any sort of change or transformation. Um, so the, the birth chart provides that for us. It, it's, um, it's, I've found it to be an amazing complement to um, my practice as a yoga teacher, just personally and for my clients teaching yoga, you know, it's a great way to get through the day, but ultimately um, we'd like to have some sort of um, explanations um, or a roadmap for our lives. And that, that's something astrology can provide to us. Wow. So the idea of the planets and how the planets are positioned mm -hmm. and how the planets essentially move move about as wanderers, so to speak, directly impacts us at that time of birth. Right. Right. And we, I guess, as spirits are probably choosing, a, you know, a alignment with the planets as as we see if we if we mm -hmm. go that far into our belief pattern. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the planets like the scientific planets, right? We're talking about, you know, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Earth, et cetera, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we talk a little bit about the planets and um, what their energies feel like and what those, those relationships feel like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's some like buzzwords and keywords in astrology um, that might be helpful to clarify for us. Right now, we're talking about planets. So those personal planets, um, the planets that are immediately visible um, by, the, by the naked eye, uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Um, so those all are representative of parts of our own psyche. Um, for example, Mercury, um, the messenger god, he rules the way we communicate and um, the way we think, um, exchange ideas. Venus, the planet of love, the goddess of love, um, talks about our need for love, um, to find and seek beauty in our lives, things like balance. Um, Mars, the god of war, he 
represents this innate need for all of us to um, be courageous in our lives, um, stand up for what we believe in, um, go to war if necessary, mm -hmm. um, and so on and so forth. Uh, Jupiter, the planet of um, the king of the gods, he's the largest planet in the universe. So he represents our ability to expand and share, um, whether it's ideas or possessions. Saturn uh, is the god of world and time. And, and he tells us, um, you know, he reminds us that it's important to, to get down to work, um, that we only have a certain amount of time um, within which to complete our work. Um, it's a very contractive planet as opposed to Jupiter, which is more of the expansive planet. And so we all have these needs and desires and qualities within us to love, to speak, to act, to share, to work. And um, wherever the planets were at the time of your birth, whichever sign um, was ruling that planet tells, a, tells you um, as a human being, um, the way that you might act out these innate principles or qualities. So for example, um, my moon, um, the moon is also, moon and sun uh, are also included in the personal planets. Um, the moon tells us uh, our primal needs and our um, emotional needs. Uh, the moon in the sign of Libra, uh, which is the sign it was in when I was born, um, Libra is a sign, one of the zodiacal signs, the 12 signs, that represents um, harmony and balance and aesthetic pleasure and beauty. So for me, my moon in Libra, um, wherever I am, especially at home, uh, because this planet for me in my birth chart is in the fourth house of home and parents, um, wherever I am, especially at home, I'm, I'm seeking out harmony and balance. And uh, I like to have my environment be pleasurable to the eye and to the, to the nose and, and you know, to the ears. I like to, um, I'm a singer, so I, uh, I appreciate harmony and, and nice, pleasurable sound being surrounded by that or whether I'm making it myself. So it's, a, it's very fascinating. I hope that cleared up a little bit about the, the immediate planets, at least. <laughs> totally. So the personal planets um, are those planets that are visible to us, which is cool um, mm -hmm. for, for me to hear because, you know, as someone who um, it works with healing, right? Of all different mm -hmm. kinds. As, as I've been studying Chinese medicine, the, and the, and cranial sacral therapy sort of together, the cranial bones are each associated with a planet. Yet I was always fascinated because some of the planets were missing. So you just mm -hmm. cleared up a big gap for me. And now I realized they were talking about the visible planets. Which, mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, personal planets are, are, are innate um, um, needs. Um, those are the moon, the sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Mm -hmm. um, then Jupiter and Saturn actually are called sort of the social planets. Um, after we've sort of dealt with our inner, our, the inner workings of our own needs and self, then we, we look at Jupiter and Saturn to see how we're interacting with the world, Makes sense. Um, people around us. And Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are the, um, the transpersonal planets, or um, they sort of describe generations um, because they're much more, uh, they, they take a lot longer to move around um, us on Earth. Mm. So um, whereas the personal planets, they move much more quickly anywhere between so mo the moon is the quickest moving planet of all two and a half days it takes um to go around the ecliptic uh whereas um you know venus and mars they take roughly um about, well a bit longer a bit longer than the moon so yeah uh, and pluto takes forever <laughs> <laughs> yeah so now, you also mentioned two other concepts. You also mentioned the zodiac and the idea of houses. So if you want to just briefly give mm -hmm. us some definitions, because I think these are things that, you know, as people are curious about what is my sign, what is my this, they start reading, but they're, you know, not always aware. So why don't we go into what is the zodiac and then follow that up with what are the houses? 
Absolutely. So the zodiac, basically, it's a, it's a term that describes the 12 30 degree segments of uh, longitude in the, um, in the sky that comprise the whole circle, the 360 degree circle of the whole sky. Um, 12 is a sacred number. Um, 12 uh, sort of um, sections of the, the sky, uh, they're divided up to show us the houses, which tell us the areas of life um, that we experience from birth all the way through death. Um, so 30 degree segments, uh, these 30 degree segments shift in the sky and whatever sign, or I'm sorry, whatever house is rising above the Eastern horizon at the time of your birth is going to tell you what your rising sign is. Um, and I, I say sign or house because each, each house is ruled by a different sign traditionally. Um, but at the same time, the houses are moving uh, in the sky. The signs are moving in the opposite direction. So you're not always going to get the exact matchup. Um, you have a one in 12 chance of having your rising sign be Aries. Um, that's the start of the, of the, um, the seasonal year for us here in the West. Um, so, so the houses um, are the 12 segments of the, Z the zodiac. And the planets can fall anywhere within those houses when you're born, um, at the time of your birth. And where they fall can tell us a lot about where our focus is going to be in our life. Um, for example, the second house of um, our possessions, our safety, uh, money. Um, the things that we can touch and feel and just um, use to feel very safe and secure um, and simple um, are, are themes of, second house, of the second house. And if you've got a stack up of planets in that house, you've got a, a pretty big focus on that area of your life in this lifetime. Mm. Um, seventh house being partnerships. Um, if you have some planets in there, you know, depending on what planet it is, um, what sign it is, you're going to, it's going to tell you a lot about the way you interact, um, with romantic partners or just anybody one-on-one -on -one. that house deals with one-on-one -on -one relationships. Mm. Um, so we could go through like the whole Zodiac <laughs> for sure. Um, but essentially our souls, they're making this journey through the Zodiac. And, um, in this life, you know, we're given the life we're given, um, the planets in the certain houses, um, represent the themes that we have to work with in this, in this life. And each planet, whatever sign it's in, it has both a high and a low side expression of itself. So what the birth chart gives to us is a roadmap. Um, and we can see based on what signs the planets are in, what houses the planets are in, um, where we might be living in the high side expression or in the low side expression of that sign. And as I mentioned, so astrology as an awareness tool, um, it, it just can tell us a lot about um, the way we're living now. And it gives us the choice. It really um, empowers us to choose whether we want to live more in the high side expression, which hopefully is what we all want to be living in, um, or the low side expression. So so yeah. this this is where the the alchemic or alchemical part of the astrology mm. comes in because we're taking the chart we're working with the interpretation and then we're uh, experiencing life almost through um the the messages and the the reality that is our our birth chart and our alignment. And that's where healing can happen, right? That's where mm -hmm. we can begin to, to catch on to our desires. We can begin to experience the things that we're really wishing to experience because our awareness is greater. Absolutely. Yes. And I think yoga as a follow-up to astrology, um, it just works. Um, it gives us the, the resources to, um, sort of create more space around um 
you know, the way that we've run our lives in the past, you know, so far. Um, and it, it frees ourselves up to make choices going forward. So um, the two, I think, work really um, synony synonymously together. So once again, what we're really talking about here, which is so often what we end up talking about on the Be Purely Balanced podcast, is deepening one's relationship with themselves, getting to know themselves on a deeper level, and essentially broadening their perspective of what's possible. Yes, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it's about. <laughs> I don't know if that was a question or a statement. I think it was a statement, but if it was a question, let me know how I can answer it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was sort of worded a little bit open-ended, but mm. I guess the, the yes is, is the affirmation there. Mm. You know, so what does the, the everyday person need to know about astrology? What is the most important component or components that they can use and, and really relate to their life? You know, this may be mm. if they don't have access to their chart or, you know, um, don't know all the details. Maybe they know their sign. What's, what's the most important bits that they, they want to know because they'll, mm. they'll help them out in a tremendous way? Absolutely. Um, so the first, the first piece of advice I have is to seek out um, an astrologer um, near to you, um, or it doesn't even have to be near to you. A lot of astrologers work over the phone, uh, myself included, um, and have that astrologer um, give you a, a birth chart reading. You can have a natal chart reading. Um, but if that is not for you at the time, financially or just timing wise, and you'd still like to get some information about um, how you can use the, the knowledge of the stars in your own life, um, astro.com, that's A-S-T-R-O.com, um, we can give you uh, your birth chart. Um, and sometimes you, they'll have interpretations there online for you. Um, but it's always helpful. I always recommend having your first natal chart reading um, in person because it really is a conversation. And a lot of times we read things on Facebook or online and it, it gives us just a, a sort of a one-way definition of, a, of what our sign is, say our sun sign, for example. Um, and when really we're, we're all changing beings, we're shifting beings, and um, astrology is really more of a, uh, a coaching um, process than it is a, you know, an astrologer telling his or her client how their fate, you know, is going to look. Um, so through conversation, you can have that, th some of your questions answered um, a little bit more accurately. Um, however, if you do want to go on astro.com, um, you just need to know your birth time and place. Um, try to get the time to the exact minute. Uh, and if you don't know your time, you can telephone the city um, or the town in which you were born. Um, and they should have that on file if it's not on your birth certificate. But essentially, once you go there, um, the, the three main planets um, or the three main aspects of your chart that you're probably going to want to be most aware of are your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. And if you can figure out which signs um, those, those planets and that aspect, that rising aspect occupied when you were born, um, that's going to give you a really nice um, outline of your own psyche. It's something I highly recommend just knowing for anybody. Um, and um, once you have determined the signs that those planets occupy, you can see how you're relating um, without judgment, without um, expectation or need to change it right then and there, um, but just to know it's giving you an awareness tool um, and then you can go from there. Great, I think, I think that's awesome advice. I think it's a, a great, starting point. So again, it seems like it's important to emphasize uh, astrology, uh, so many healing modalities are about mm -hmm. relationships. And if we think about, you know, Chinese medicine, we think about the elements and their relationships to each other. And as you're emphasizing here, as we're talking about astrology, we're thinking about planets and how the planets relate to each other and how then we as humans are relating 
to the planets and to our sky and to our earth and to really source energy. Um, so if you just want to, if you want to talk about the, the relationships of energy and the relationships of, you know, almost vibrational frequency, I, I would love to hear how that plays into astrology. Mm, mm. Well, essentially there are two sort of theories, um, that, that make astrology quote work. And although we can't prove it, um, as we've mentioned, a lot of the healing modalities, like we can't prove them and, and that's okay. Um, we know them to exist. Um, we know them to work and sometimes that's, you know, no explanation necessary. Um, yeah. so just to see, you know, how astrology works for you. Um, if you're interested, give it a try. And, um, you might be surprised if you are a little skeptical. Um, mm -hmm. and so getting past fear. And, um, so the first planet essentially, um, uh, I'm sorry, the first theory essentially is that the planets in the universe are so large that they have a gravitational pull, um, on the earth. And because we're on the earth, we're affected as well. Mm. So it's a very small effect. Um, you know, we sometimes have a likelier chance of picking up the energy of the person sitting next to us than we do of the larger planets. Um, but the pull is there. And in the East, they term that, that pull graha or grip. Um, they have a grip on us. Mm. Uh, and, and you can relate to this if you, there's a couple of free apps um, you can get that will tell you the sign of the moon on any dip, given day. And as I mentioned, the moon changes signs the most frequently in our sky every two and a half days or so. And you can do some research of your, on your own check in and see, you know, if the moon in that certain sign for that day is, is causing you to, to feel a, a certain way. For example, moon in Aries, um, maybe you're, you're, you're finding yourself accomplishing some, some tasks or being active in the body. Um, whereas moon in cancer is going to perhaps cause you to want to stay indoors um, and tap into your emotional um, energy or wounds um, for that, you know, couple days or so. So that's a nice way to experiment um, if you're new or old to astrology. <laughs> um, and so the second theory overall is that um, the birth chart sort of works like a clock. Um, and if you look up in the sky, um, currently, or if you just look at your natal chart, um, the planets themselves can be seen as hands on a clock, um, at our, our, our ev evolutional clock. And, um, as the current planets in the sky are sort of moving across our natal planets or the, the position the planets were when we were born, um, that gives us a nice sense of timing, sort of um, like hands on a clock spinning around. So that's kind of, those are kind of like the two um, main theories for how astrology affects us on a vibrational uh, level. And I like to, I like to think they both work. Hmm. Yeah. So as we start to think more and more, um, about vibration as we start to think more and more about consciousness and this idea of energy is matter matter is energy mm. looking up at the sky tuning into the planets tuning into the constellations is there something more than the novelty of like hanging out and and looking at the sky like is there an aspect of healing that comes from being with the stars, the planets, the moon, the skies? Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I think just philosophically speaking, um, knowing, that, knowing that the planets represent archetypes um, that correlate to our primal needs and desires, um, the archetypes within us, we, we automatically can uh, feel a sense of connection to what's happening. Um, in the in the universe uh, I think spending time in reflection and contemplation the more um, able we are to slow down and and really um, reflect and meditate and dive into our subconscious um, the more we can connect really with what's happening um, 
on on the lunar on the lunar scale um, on the celestial scale. So it, it really I think is when talking about connecting to what's happening above. Um, we really need to let go of some of the stuff <laughs> that we've accumulated on Earth and ideas and and even material possessions um, that sort of can cloud this connection and whether you want to connect it to to the universe to God to spirit to your angels whatever they are um, there's there's a sense of sort of responsibility here on Earth um, to do that 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 work really of um, clearing the subconscious of all the learned pattern and behavior and I think modalities like yoga and meditation are are great ways to get there I think <laughs> yeah I, th I yeah. think you're right yeah. um, I love how you said this clearing the subconscious of all learned behavior mm. uh, it, it's so it, <laughs> it's so necessary yeah yeah. yeah, it can pile up and sneak up on us and mm, immense amount of work. I think spiritual work is some of the hardest work we'll do in our life for that reason. And it's not even that we get through it all in this lifetime. And, you know, that's half the half of the logic behind um, why we might reincarnate is because one lifetime is way too short to get right. through that. <laughs> totally. So, yeah. So, okay. So let's let's dive in in a little deeper here. So very often, you know, you hear people saying, oh, you know, Mercury's in retrograde, so everything's upside down. And <laughs> sometimes I'm curious, do people, do people know what, you know, what that actually means? Um, and, and then I'm also curious, what, what is actually going on? And is it going to be affecting more people, uh, pe some people more than other people? Yeah, um, it's like an awesome question, super talked about. Um, so Mercury retrograde, big buzzword. Mercury spends a ton of time in retrograde. Uh, about two to three times a year, it will go retrograde. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's moving backwards in the zodiac. It simply means that it's spinning so fast that it appears to be moving backwards. Um, and astrology, once again, it, it, cannot, it cannot prove um, anything. However, you can track patterns and, and look at your life. Um, and see how that uh, transit, um, that planetary movement is affecting you. So Mercury, again, being the god of uh, communication um, and intellect, uh, he can, when he's moving retrograde, um, spinning so quickly, in fact, disturb things like travel plans or um, communication. Um, slow browser times can happen. Um, words can get confused and, and stuck. But there's an interesting thing um, because Mercury happens retrograde two to three times a year. One person might be born with Mercury retrograde, and thus, when the Mercury is spinning retrograde, um, you know, in real time, that person might feel even more in touch with who they are um, because they were born with that transit. Mm. So, <clears throat> um, contrary to popular belief, not all people are experiencing a sort of disconnection during Mercury retrograde. Um, it's yeah, that, that that makes a lot of sense. So is there a way to, you know, Mercury goes into retrograde, right? It's it's just a thing that happens. So yeah. is there a way for us to live in a manner based upon, of course, our natal chart and our sign and so on? Is there a way for us to really like be with that energy and harness the the positive aspects of that energy, um, you know, rather than sort of sinking into the thought process of everything's upside down and disconnected and falling apart. Mm, absolutely. Um, so any planets go, all the planets will go retrograde at some point or another. Um, and when this happens, you can think of the theme of going backwards, um, not literally, but just um, apparently going backwards, um, taking these, these times to do some own, reevaluating and and reflecting and going back in your own life and um based on what's happened in the past say six months to a year or whatever time have you um uh, am i living my my highest truth or am i living in my highest vibration right now um, because sometimes it does take that that ruminating or that going over not so much ruminating but at least looking backward and and evaluating um 
from a place um, from the past. Now, hindsight is always twenty twenty. So, um, you know, using using these retrograde times as as tools, um, as as real tools toward forward progress. Um, so once if Mercury is in retrograde for um, you know several weeks, then then during those several weeks, yeah, taking time to pause and and sit with some energy um, and do some reflection hmm. is not a bad idea. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, getting in touch with our astrology, alchemical astrology, is, is giving us a chance to tune in to our consciousness on a level that brings it outside of just the physical being that we are and connecting us to the, the planet and the universe. Um, so what about then? other universes, other dimensions. What is that like? And does that play into astrology? Hmm. <laughs> Great question. Um, so as far as other universes, like uh, I'm not very tuned or knowledgeable, I should say about like the like fifth dimension, sixth, seventh, eighth dimension um, worlds. Um, so I, I don't know how helpful I can be on that, on that sort of subject. Um, but certainly, you know, looking for, at the universe from here on earth, I mean, um, you know, looking at the sky, um, it's just a matter of like, what's, what works for you? What are you feeling in your body that's resonating? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a good answer. You know, I think that, that that's really what it, what it's about is what resonates mm. period. I think that's mm. the answer to anything, right? <laughs> oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I, totally. Totally. Yeah. So Ashley, is there anything else that you feel you'd really like to share with our listeners today? Mm. If you have a natal reading or a chart reading, or yeah, I mean, as just to wrap up our last thought, like if you're getting any advice from anybody, whether it's a yoga teacher, an astrologer, uh, an energy healer, a practitioner, um, you know, nobody knows the inner workings of your mind as well as you do. And nobody knows your soul's journey as well as you could potentially um, know. And so just to take everything, um, you know, bit by bit, Take, give yourself time to di digest the information that um, you're choosing to be exposed to. Um, it's such a it's such a gift you give yourself, really, in the long term. So definitely taking your time and and seeking out someone that your your heart, your soul will resonate with as far as um, healing is concerned um, would be my best pieces of advice. And you can uh, please feel free to reach out to me via my website, ridethewaveyoga.com. I provide natal readings and transit readings and one-on-one um, -on -one instruction. So it's uh, my pleasure. Excellent. So your website, ridethewaveyoga.com, and you are located in Newburyport, Massachusetts, and you've got some awesome classes in Newburyport, um, but you also do some, some online stuff. So you're accessible to our listeners all over. Absolutely. Yes, Crystal. Yay. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. This has been such a pleasure to have you and have this sacred, you know, space and really feel that energy supported by the universe today. It's so my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah.